Hello, I'd like to practice with you in your journal. So find a blank spot and do a little upside down U. We're gonna pretend it's the top of your skull head that we need to put a hat on today. Look at how I drew lines on the sides of the hat that would fit around the sides of the skull. And then I'm gonna make a smaller rectangle for the bottom of the hat. So that hat could scoot right down on top of that head. Now I want you to practice shading with your pencil. That means that over on the left and the right, you're going to shade it a little bit darker using feathery strokes. We'll be able to see up here on the body of the hat. I'm using feathery left and right strokes on the sides, because this will look like the shadows of a satiny hat. Now I'm pressing a little bit more lightly as I come to the center, and we're gonna leave kind of a light white satiny strip in the middle. So that's one example of a hat you might do. Let's do another top of the skull. So do a big upside down U, and then do two eye sockets. And this is a hat that has just an upside down U curved round top. Notice the left hand side of the body of that hat could scoot down over the left hand side of the head and the right hand is directly above the right hand side of the skull. And now I am shading the left and the right. So every hat has a top. It's either a square or a upside down bowl shape. And you just need to make sure that they line up with the head. And then the brim can be wide like this one or a little bit skinnier. It can even be a baseball hat if you make the brim go to one of the sides. And then shading today, we're going to practice feathery strokes that start on the left and then get lighter as they go toward the center. And feathery strokes on the right hand side that start on the right hand side and get more light as they get to the center. So you can practice shading in your journal a little bit more later, but I want to show you that when you get your real skull picture back, you get to color that bone inside of your skull. That means that you can leave the eye sockets open, which is hard to do. A lot of the time we want to get this paper, we want to color right in those big circles first, but then you can. And it won't be ruined or anything if you do on accident either, but if you focus on the bony parts around the skull, around the eye sockets, then you can decide if you wanna leave those black or not. I leave that little nose triangle black so that it looks like a cavity or a hole in the skull. And you can turn your paper to color however is easiest for you. So once you get your skull all colored in and all those teeth leaving the cavities or the, the open parts black, then you can color your vertebrae, which are those neck and spine bones, and your clavicles, which are those top bones that connect our neck to our shoulders and rib cage. So just like we did our hat in our journal, you get to use a new piece of paper today to build a hat for your skull. And so that means Right above your skull, you'll make a line that matches up with the left-hand side and a line that matches up with the right-hand side. So I'm looking at my skull and right above that is the left-hand side of my hat and right above the right side is the right side of my hat. And then you can make your brim any size that you want. If you want a tall hat, you can use a tall piece of paper. And if you want a wide hat, you can use a wide piece of paper. So now I'm going to set my skull aside and begin to use that color on my hat. Choose a main color for your hat. For this one, I'm choosing a green. And I am starting on the side and I'm making feathery left-right strokes. And remember, you can turn your paper however it is comfortable for you to color. Because a hat will be shadowy towards the back and sides, we are going to color the dark color there and we are gonna feather some white across the middle. Notice I'm always coloring in the same direction. 
Also, to get the sides really dark and shadowy, you can use a black oil pastel, coloring feathery strokes. And then, to make this kind of look like a painting or something that's blended, oil pastel does a really good job of going back in with your main green color and blending everything together. You will see that the hat begins to take form right in front of your eyes. It starts to look like it's coming out off the paper. And that's the trick we're using for this art project. We wanna make things look 3D with highlights and low lights, highlights and shadows. So now I'm cutting my hat out and you will get to try your hat on your skull head. You get to decide how high or low it sits and then you get to position it however you like. For this, I decided a little bit of a tilt is cool. You don't have to do that, it can be straight. But that means I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna trace on the back the area that will be touching and therefore the area that I need to glue. So that pencil line shows me that I wanna glue below that line to stick it to my skull paper. I'm using the brush glue for this, but you can try a healthy dose of some glue stick if you wanna do that instead. This glue will probably work well on already oily paper. And use that brush to really get around the edges and everything that's gonna to be touching. Now I can put it back in its spot and press and hold, make sure that what is touching is actually being glued. If you want to add for bonus points any marigold flowers or any Day of the Dead kind of flowers, you can make them on your scrap paper. I use the two different colors to make an interesting flower circle and I'm cutting petals. It's a very decorative, fancy holiday. So I can glue the middle of that and decide which side of my hat I want it to sit and those flaps can stay flapping up. So funny. With a real nice hat, our skulls are really funny bones. Here are some different hats you can make and different positions for a flower. You can use lots of flowers. And just take your time coloring and building your hats today. Here's one way you can draw a hat that might fit on your skull skeleton. And here's another kind of hat you might like to make. 